Introducing Sharon Lecter. In addition to being a best-selling author, Sharon is a CPA, CGMA, entrepreneur, international speaker, master business advisor, and proud mother and grandmother. Sharon has been a pioneer in developing new technologies, programs, and products to bring education into people's lives in ways that are innovative, challenging, and fun. She serves as a national spokesperson for the AICPA for Financial Literacy and was a member of the First President's Advisory Council on Financial Literacy and is founder of Pay Your Family First. Her latest books, released in cooperation with the Napoleon Hill Foundation, include Three Feet from Gold, Outwitting the Devil, and Think and Grow Rich for Women. Also released is her award-winning money and life reality game, Thrive Time for Teens. She is also the co-author of the international best-selling book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and led the Rich Dad organization to global success as CEO before being asked by the Napoleon Hill Foundation to join forces in bringing the important messaging of Napoleon Hill to new generations. Sharon lives each day to benefit youth, aspiring entrepreneurs, business owners, and individuals ready to be the CEOs of their lives. Welcome, Sharon Lecter. Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? What a great day. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Um, I can barely see you with all the light, but I want to talk about a little bit. We only have 20 minutes together, so I kind of figure, what can I talk about? And the question is, why not? I want to talk about why not. We all talk about why finding your why, your passion, right? And instead, when I was 25 and I'd followed the old path, gotten my education, became a CPA, one of my clients came and said, I'd like for you to join me in this company. So at the ripe old age of 25, when you know everything, remember that? Remember when we know everything? I made the decision. I went back to my apartment and I had the yellow legal pad, pros, cons. You guys ever do that, right? It didn't help at all. I could argue both sides. So my hand kind of took over and wrote across the top of the page, why not? And that's become my, my philosophy for the rest of my life. Yes, we want our why, we want our passion, but why not do something different? Why not take the road less traveled? Now, if the answer is illegal, that's a good reason why not. But that's what, where success is found. The most successful businesses solve a problem or serve a need, something new. They take a path less traveled. In our lives, if we follow everyone else, we won't quite have the same kind of success that we can if we truly chart a new course. So everybody say, why not? Why not? Say it so we can hear you. Why not? And that's truly how I have led my life. Even though I have that conservative accounting brain, I've got that entrepreneurial brain, and they argue all the time, but at the end of the day, I say, why not do something different? And my, my philosophy is the personal success equation. I promise no numbers, even if I'm an accountant. But I want you to think about your own life as I go through this. We talk about combining your passion and your talent. And this is what we go to school for. Right? You have your passion. For me, we talk about do what you love, love what you do, right? Well, for me, my passion came from anger. I was mad that we weren't teaching kids about money in school. And that started in December of 1992 when my oldest son got into credit card debt. I was so mad at him, but I was more angry with myself. And so that's when I dedicated the rest of my career to financial literacy and financial education. And that anger is still fueling my passion today. And that, it, really is to make sure every child has the opportunity. Money is a life skill, but talent, your talent is what you learn. I was a CPA. I had started with the global, uh, built the talking book industry for children, so I knew about publishing, so I was able to combine those two things. And most entrepreneurs stop there. They think they have to do it on their own. They don't realize that true success comes from the power of association. For those of you who are in the panel, I talked about it a little bit. Who is on your team? So I'm going to dive into that a little bit more deep, deeply today because this is where true success is found. 
It's how you surround yourself, the people that open doors for you, the associations that you make and the associations that you build. And then, of course, that little sneaky thing called action. You've already heard a couple speakers talk about action. People know what they're supposed to do, but they don't do it. Ever feel that way? Yes. You know, it's a little kind of in the mirror for me at times, too. And then faith, having faith in yourself. This is what gets you through the hard times, knowing that what you're doing is needed and necessary. Faith in yourself, faith in your company, faith in what you're creating. The most successful companies do one of two things, solve a problem or serve a need. And if you remind yourself every morning what problem you're solving, what need you're serving, it gives you that energy to keep going even when the time gets tough. So ask yourself, look at this equation. I love the last few years I've been working with high level mentoring clients, helping them get to the next level. And usually it's the power of association. Who can I introduce them to in my network? How can I open doors for them to build their business to the next level? That power of association is so important. Let's talk about it a little bit. You know, what is your environment? Ask yourself right now, are the people around you positive or are they negative? And sometimes the most negative people, particularly when you're starting off on something new, is your own family. And you may not be able to get rid of them, but you can reduce the time that you allow them to feed your brain. Because believe me, when you create that success, they'll be the first ones cheering you on and asking for a loan. So again, what's your surrounding? Well, who are the people around you? You know, who's on your team? If you're the smartest person on your team, you are limiting your opportunity for great success. Are they cheering you on or holding you back? And only you can answer that. So please challenge yourself. You're here at an opportunity. You've got a lot of exhibitors. I'm here. We've got other people that are here. We're here to support you. If we can introduce you to someone, we would willingly do that. So please come and talk to us and see how we can support you. you know, ask yourself, who are you listening to? Do they have true success? You know, I get really frustrated sometime in this industry because there's somebody on stage who doesn't even really know what they're talking about, but because they've learned how to speak well and they've got a you know, snake oil um, sales pitch, they end up selling stuff, and then they can't deliver. So make sure you do your due diligence. Are they going to work with you on your business as you're looking for a mentor, or are they just trying to sell you theirs? Again, ask those questions. You deserve the very best. Are they going to make those introductions for you? Do they have satisfied clients who have demonstrated success? So again, you are your best advocate. You know, many times we kind of sit back and wait and let things happen to us. Take charge, take action. I want all the experts in the room to stand. Everybody should be standing. Come on, all of you, stand up, stand up. You are all experts. Say, I'm an, I'm an expert. I am an expert. Now change the power of words. One, I am the expert. I am the expert. Yes, you are. And you, no one else has walked your path. No one else has had the opportunities, the sex successes, and the learning opportunities that you have. You are the expert in what you do. Thank you very much. So what we want to do is support you in moving from being the expert to becoming the authority. I can stand here and tell you I am the global authority on financial literacy. And I say that proudly, but I've worked very hard at that. Eve, every one of you has the opportunity to become the authority in your field. You know, identify your niche. You know, I talk to people sometimes and they go, well, tell me who your target client is. And they go, everybody. All right, and I was that way too at Rich Dad. Everybody. Well, no, there's a niche. Identify your niche. You know, and pick a trend. There's so much changing in the economy today. What trend can you help? 
what can you do? Is it because we've got the millennials by 2025, 75% of our workforce are millennials? All right, the growing number of women in business, the growing number of women on corporate boards. What is your niche? What trend do you want to support so that you can become the authority? And make sure you have a strategic plan. And that's helpful when you have a mentor. They can help you create that strategic plan. Work the plan, take action, and then reassess the plan as you do it because there are things that you might need to adjust. But just like every opportunity in life, new doors open. Now, sometimes you have to close one door for other doors of opportunity to open. The day when I made the decision to leave the Rich Dad organization, we were at the height of our success. We've been together for 10 years, written 15 books, and I was unhappy. I was no longer aligned with my partners, and it was like I needed to make a change. I made that decision. And never, I made that change because it was the right thing to do. I didn't know what was going to come to me. And yet, by closing that door, I got the call from President Bush. I would never have gotten that call had I still been at Rich Dad. And then a few months later, I got the call from Napoleon Hill Foundation. I read Think and Grow Rich when I was 19. I would never have gotten that phone call had I still been at Rich Dad. So I challenge you, are there doors in your life that you need to close so other doors will open to you? and create the opportunity that you so richly deserve. We have to take that action at times. We have to prepare ourselves and create the fact that we are open to the possibilities. Allow yourself to start hosting experts. If you feel like you're not quite there, start interviewing the experts. Have your picture taken with them. Write articles. Create assets. Write articles, do interviews, because by being the one interviewing the experts, you become an expert. It helps you build your authority, your expertise. Write a book. Yes, I've written a few, 22, but that gives you the book is the new business card. And with the ability to do it electronically now, it's never been easier. I was mentoring a young gal last year. She worked for her parents' real estate company, and she was in her 20s, and she said, nobody respects me. And I said, well, maybe you need to demand that respect. So I said, do you have clients that ask you the same questions all the time when they're looking for a house? She says, yes. I said, do you have clients who ask you the same questions when they're wanting to sell their house? Yes. I said, so write a little book, the top five things you need to do when you sell your house. or top five things you need to do when you want to sell your house. She did it, literally she was a go-getter. Taking action was not her problem. And she wrote it, six months later she came back to see me and she says, you won't believe it. She says, I did it now, I've been asked to speak five times, and now people in my office that used to ignore me are coming to me asking advice. Simply because she took the opportunity to write a book and create the authority in her field. So what can you do to create authority in your field? Because each one of these items allows you the how, specifically how you can become an authority. And it doesn't have to be a 200 page book anymore. All right, you don't have to have a big publisher anymore. It's never been easier to create the expertise and to become the authority. And again, I ask you, why not? Say it with me, why not? Because a lot of you are sitting there maybe saying, easy for her to say, right? That little inside voice, easy for her to say. Well, I've been in your chair, and I caught myself into this why not philosophy. It, sometimes it kind of drives me crazy, because I just don't feel like doing something, and then I go, well, why not go do that? Why not open up a new opportunity? But then I also remind myself, sometimes you have to say no. And some of us aren't really good at saying no. We get all kinds of offers and they're not on point. They're not allowing us to build our authority in our niche. So we go off on these tangents. It's a very technical term. It's called shiny object syndrome. SOS. 
shiny object syndrome. It's a killer, and I am really bad about it. That's why I have a COO in my company named Angela Topman. I told she's the one with the velvet hammer. You know, I'm the one that calls at 10 o'clock, say, oh, I have a new idea. And she says, okay, Sharon, where does that fall in number priority one, two, three, and four today? You need that kind of assistance. You need people on your team who are strong where you are weak. Because entrepreneurs are famous for shiny object syndromes. So believe me, I still suffer from it. And thank God I have Angela Topman on my team. So we talk about, particularly women, this work-life balance thing. And I actually don't believe it exists. In fact, it makes me mad when I hear talk about work-life balance. Thank you. I want everybody to stand up. We're going to do a little exercise. <clears throat> Put your hands down on your side, feet shoulder width apart, and just look down, close your eyes, and be quiet. Be balanced. Did you feel the energy drop in the room? Now open your eyes, look, smile, start shifting your weight back and forth, look at your neighbor. We are never balanced. We have our physical life, we have our financial life, we have our spiritual life, we have our business family. We have all aspects. So let's get rid of the work-life balance idea and come up with one big life. Thank you very much, you can sit down. One big life. Let it all work together. As an entrepreneur, you, have, you can have it all. Sometimes when you get up in the morning and you didn't spend enough time with your kids yesterday, don't spend precious time today worrying about that. Just make different decisions today. Have one big life. Women are really good warriors. I'm a champion warrior. I came from the best. My mother was the queen of worry. And about 10 years ago, I found the definition to worry is to pray for what you do not want. Shall I repeat that? To worry is to pray for what you do not want. So I'm still the champion warrior, but I now catch myself. And I say, stop, Sharon. Instead of focusing on what I don't want, I do a little switch and I start focusing on what I do want. And it's truly magical. It gets you out of that cesspool of negativity and helps you create the future that you deserve. But what has crippled us in today's society is debt life balance. And so I ask you to think about your own life. Are there things that you need to do to get yourself more financially secure? At the end of the day, you're either a master of your money or a slave to it. There's not much in between. And so I've dedicated my career to helping people not just create businesses, but to take control of their financial lives. I'm not gonna ask you to tell me which one you are because you really know what it is. But at the end of the day, we have choices with every dollar that comes in our hands. We have the opportunity to expand our means or live below our means. And expand our means means buy or create assets. Asset is the sexiest word on earth. Say it with me, assets. Say it sexy, assets. It is the sexiest word on earth. I also, my second one is royalties, my third one is leverage, but assets takes the case. In the economy as women, we already hold 60% of all personal wealth in the US. With that comes responsibility for us to train ourselves. Yeah, that's a pretty woohoo, right? And we make 85% of all consumer decisions and I bet we have a whole lot to do with the other 15%, right? And over the next 40 years, we will inherit $30 trillion. So with that comes a responsibility, ladies, and you few gents who are supporting us, ladies, is we have to train ourselves. We have to understand the power of money. In the book, Th um, Think and Grow Rich for Women was my most recent one. We talk about the fact that I think success is the same for men and women, but we approach it very differently. 
you know, as women, we are great collaborators. We're great at multitasking. And in a crisis, who shows up? Girlfriends, right? Women. But by the University of Pennsylvania, they actually helped prove my theory that you know, the steps of success are the same, but men and women, we approach them very differently. Men tend to hang out on one side of their brain. They're very good strategic thinkers. They are very good at making a decision. We women are great problem solvers, but we tend to go back and forth in our brain, all over the place. And that's why it's the beautiful thing is when men and women come together to work together, we get the greatest results. Because indecision is a decision. And a lot of women go into analysis paralysis. So you need to take action. You need to be, to be decisive and create the life you deserve. Ask yourself about your personal success equation. What do you need to change? This is your opportunity today to make a decision. Today to expand your association. Today to find or ask for a mentor that can truly invest themselves into your success so you don't do it alone. And I ask you, why not? Say it for me. Why not? Why not? I have a gift for you. It is actually an ebook, but it was a hardcover book. The Money Bible is called You and Your Money. Text Sharon to 55678. It's a gift to you. It's true. It is truly a 200 page book, all aspects of money. And this is my mission in life is to provide financial education to anyone who is seeking it. So please do that. And I am at booth um, 528. I have a special gift for you. Come to the booth. I'll share. Just tell me you were here and you heard me. And I appreciate that. And it's been my pleasure to be with you. I'm a couple minutes over time. Is that OK? Yeah. So have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you.